Hello everyone, Stove here, and on the third edition of Know Your Enemy, we're going to be talking about the Saber Raven. We already went over the Saber and the Saber Comet on the second edition, so if you missed that, be sure to check that out. Now, the Saber Raven was a promotional ship given out to people who bought an Intel 900p solid state drive. When you redeem this code, the Raven is valued at $200 in the shop. 40 more than what the regular Saber is valued at. Of course, you can't buy it on the store at the moment, but if it were to become available during the sale, $200 would be the price tag. Is it worth that extra money? Let's take a look and find out. Now, the first thing you'll notice about the Raven is its unique design and shape. It is a fixed-wing aircraft, unlike the regular Sabre variants. How this will translate into the new flight model will remain to be seen. That said, it does have eight thrusters, just like its regular Sabre variants, four on the top and four on the bottom. This makes this ship very, very agile. Uh, this, combined with its small, flat profile, can make an extremely hard target to hit if flown correctly. The other two unique things about the Raven is that it is one of three ships that has the ability to EMP burst, the other two being the Hawk and the Avenger Warlock. And out of those three, it's the only one that is also considered stealth. Now, I have a Warlock and I had a Hawk, and out of those three, I do consider the Raven in the current state of the game to be the best of all three EMP ships, and I'll go over a little bit more about this when I talk about the modules and stats of the ship. Now, this ship has a couple of weak points, one being a major one that other light ships don't seem to have, so keep this in mind. The rear engine here is just one small engine. It can be shot out. Um, if you collide with something, it can knock out, uh, leaving a giant crater where the engine used to be in this section. And uh, you still have the eight thrusters to guide you, but flight is very tricky. You can still warp. In a fight, it is death, though, unless you can warp away really quick. Uh, the other weak points, of course, are the wings on the sides here. They will break off right about here. The positive to that is that they do seem to leave the guns intact when they do break off. I've never had a situation where the wing is broken off and a gun with it. So that's a positive there. So just like it's regular say As for armament, this ship comes stock with two size three Coraler laser cannons. Out of the three laser cannons, these do the most damage per hit. So you're getting the most damage possible for this class of weapon, which is great stock. Uh, the Raven comes with no missiles. Instead, it has two size two MXOX EMP devices. I'll go over the stats on these EMP devices and the other variants in a second. Uh, one thing to note is where the weapons are mounted on the Raven. Instead of the weapons being up front on the nose, they are on each wing. Uh, this can make it difficult to hit ships sometimes as ships can pass between these weapons because they're so wide. Um, it's something to get used to when only having two weapons. Most ships that have weapons like this have them on the nose and they're close together. This ship has a little bit wider weapons, so keep this in mind when you're first trying it out. Uh, the lack of weapons in general and because they're so far apart can cause some frustration when learning to fly this ship. Um, it's kind of underwhelming, uh, but combined with the EMP, uh, it, it turns out this ship can be good if you know how to fly it correctly and engage correctly with it. So we'll go over more on that a little bit later when I show you some videos of and some footage of it in action, okay? Also, a side note here, just before we get into the stats and modules, if you want to buy one of these, the codes as of January 18th still worked. Uh, there has been a patch since then, but the website page is still there as of making this video. Someone on the forums also said Intel purchased a set amount of these codes so they will always be redeemable. So while it was supposed to expire December 31st, that doesn't seem to be the case. That said, if you buy one of these on the gray market, make sure to be promised a refund if it doesn't work. Most will. Uh, you can get these at about $100 right now, which is half price of what the store value is. It's a great pickup. Um, I do see these ships being valuable later on when the time to kill is increased. So uh, that said, uh, take what you want for it. You can get one of these if you want, possibly still. Just be wary on that and uh, make sure to get everything in writing. All right, here we are looking at the EMP stats for the different ships. As you can see here, the Cyclone also gets one. I have not tried this, and I don't know if it's even in the game. If you have, let me know how it works. Uh, the most notable thing here is that these, the Warlock has the most shield EMP damage at 3,800. The Saber Raven comes in second with 3,600 because it has two of them, remember that, and the Hawk only has one at 1,800. Um, now, when it comes to shield damage, this is actually pretty weak. Okay, uh, the average light ship is going to have somewhere between uh, 2,000 to 3,600 shield HP. 
Um, prospectors are one of the weakest. They actually have like 1600 shield HP, so you will always turn off that ship if you EMP it. Um, other ships, though, it, some sit right around at 3600 HP, like the Saber itself and the Saber Raven, where you're going to have a little bit more of a tough time burning through those shields and turning that ship off because to turn off a ship you have to burn through its shield and hit the ship okay so if the shield absorbs all the EMP you're just gonna turn off the shields and the ship is gonna keep moving or you're just gonna uh, damage the shields a little bit if the shield HP is much larger than 3600 so know what ship you're fighting and its shield HP okay that's the best advice I can give you if you're gonna fly an EMP ship always know the shield HP of the ship that you're fighting against. That's gonna help you a lot in determining when to use this EMP, okay? Uh, the second thing to note here is that the radius of the EMPs are very small, uh, the largest being the Warlock at 1200. Now, I'm not allowed to fly my Warlock in fleets because somehow my fleet mates keep getting hit by this. Uh, the Saber Raven I like a little bit more actually because it's less and my fleet mates don't seem to get hit by it. So it has that going for it over the uh, Warlock. Uh, that said, there, there is some pros and cons to this, of course. Um, take it for what you will here. I don't really find this to be an issue. I use the EMP a little bit different. Again, a lot of people have this conception in their mind that they're going to fly and intercept a ship and EMP down its shields and then kill it. Uh, that's a very situational uh, thing to happen. Um, if you're waiting somewhere at, at like somewhere like Jump Town or something like that, or you're waiting at Levski to kill ships that are taking off, yes, this can be a tactic. But in a real dogfight for somebody that actually wants to fight you, um, as soon as you blow that EMP, the very first thing you're going to do is die. Okay, so you gotta you gotta work the EMP, and you have to know when to use it uh, at its best advantage. Okay, and I'm going to teach you how to do that with some combat footage. Uh, I've flown this ship quite a bit over the last couple of weeks. Um, I do find that a saber is better overall. Like, why bring an EMP and two guns to a fight when I can just bring four and kill the ship in two or three shots, uh, whereas I have to work a little bit harder with the Saber Raven. Of course, CIG said they, wants to, uh, they want to increase the time to kill for a lot of these ships. Um, so in the future, EMPs might be a little bit better, but still, even though uh, they're going to have to get a little bit more work because, again, the shield damage on the EMP is really lackluster, so they're going to have to make some changes in this area for these ships to be considered uh, S-tier, but uh, as far as fun to fly, very fun to fly, guys. If you like frustrating your opponents and doing crazy things, uh, this is one of the more unique uh, classes in the game, these three ships right here. Uh, the Hawk is really, really not a great ship. I advise against it. The only thing going for it is it has a good armament, but it doesn't have enough power to run everything. Uh, that's It's really one weakness to this ship. Uh, the Warlock is the same way with only one power supply. Uh, this giant size 4 EMP that only does 200 damage more than the Saber Raven size 2s, um, it's, it, it just lack, lacks all around to me. Okay, so in my mind, these ships do need some work, but they are very fun to fly. Uh, that said, the charge time on these EMPs are 12 seconds. Again, though, this is dependent on if you have the power to do it. Uh, the Hawk and the Warlock are going to struggle here if you're fighting and shooting weapons at the same time, especially laser weapons. Uh, it's going to struggle to charge these up in the middle of fight, and uh, with your shields recharging especially, uh, the Warlock and the Hawk will really struggle to get this 12 second time. The Saber Raven seems to not struggle at all and uh, you can actually just upgrade the power supply just a little bit more and have this 12 seconds almost always. So the beautiful thing about the Raven here is that it does have two power supplies and it is able to achieve this 12 second charge time almost 100% of the time. Um, and the other great thing about it is it has the lowest or of the three uh, unleash time, which is only 0.75 seconds on delay. Now there is an extra delay associated with popping an EMP. When you first charge an EMP to 100%, if your ship is working a little bit harder and uh, like moving around at afterburner speed or you're shooting, you're going to get these popping noises when it reaches 100%. It's going to go like a da 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 And when it does that, you're not going to be able to fire off the EMP. you got to wait for that to stop, then hit the button, and then you're going to get this delay. Okay, so if you're moving really fast, shooting, doing things like like that, it can be kind of tricky to hit within this range um, with one of these EMPs. Uh, it's kind of like one of those uh, arcade games with the lights that go around really fast and you have to hit the button to make it stop. It can be kind of frustrating just like that because it has associated or a little bit of delay associated with it. Okay, uh, The cooldown time for the ships 
uh, 12 seconds for the Raven, 25 for the Warlock, 12 seconds for the Hawk. Not really a huge factor here. You can pull off multiple EMPs in a minute if you need to. Um, not really a big deal. You should only need to use one or two in a fight anyways. So this really isn't a huge factor here. And of course the heat factor is 0 0.05. It does heat up your ship a little bit more um, and cause it to uh, release some extra heat. So your, your IR is going to spike when you're using EMP. So the stealth of the Raven goes way down when you turn on that EMP. Okay? And that's how those work. Okay, here we are looking at the Saber Raven stats on hardpoint. And the first thing you'll notice, of course, is the 3000 power. Can't stress that enough how good that is. Now, with shields recharging, you do have 88%. Now, you can get this to 100% a number of ways. Okay? And with the EMP charging again, guys, it's not going to be uh, 100 or 88% efficient. It's going to be a little bit less. All right? So keep this in mind as well. Um, with that EMP, it's not shown here for some reason on hard point, but uh, it's, it takes about 20% other power, so it's about 68% efficiency, and we can get that up a lot just by changing the power. Uh, if you go maximum power, it's at 100% all day, and you're not going to have to worry about EMPs. Um, if you want to drop it to something like a firewall cascade, you're still going to be around 100%. Even with EMP charging, it's going to be fine. Uh, you can get these off the scythe, by the way, if you're a subscriber. You can just pull these off. Um, things like that. So uh, another way to do this, of course, is to keep the sonic lights on there and we're going to upgrade the shield. Now, a lot of people want to get these nice all stops, 1800 shield capacity, right? They're huge, they're nice, they're big. We don't really want those. The best shields I've actually found to go on the Saber Raven and EMP ships themselves are these, uh, the racing variants, because they draw a lot less power, almost half less power than uh, a normal shield would draw when they're trying to regenerate. Uh, okay, now this is shield recharging, of course, and you can change this number by hitting standby and looking at it there. Again, the power is much less even when on standby compared to normal. Uh, but again, when they're recharging, um, these uh, shields uh, only pull 293 or 307, and when you do that and you have the sonic lights on, you're still at 100% efficiency, even with the EMP. So you can do this a number of different ways, guys. Uh, this is going to hurt your stealth a little bit, just so you know. Now, EMP is going to hurt your stealth a bit, too. So as soon as you hit that EMP and you start charging it up, your stealth goes out the window. But again, your target should see you at that point anyways. Um, you can sneak up on people with stealth with this ship, guys. So take your choices on shields wisely. I would say. If you're going to use stealth more, go ahead and stick with the shimmers. Um, if you're not, go ahead and put on a target if you're really craving that extra power and you don't have access to bigger power supplies if you have to buy them or something like that. Go ahead and do this. Combined together, it's actually just a huge boost. If you do something like this, um, you're not going to have to worry about power at all. When it comes to coolers, coolers do have different stats, guys. Uh, they're right here just so you know, and I will link this in the video description for you guys. Um, when it comes to bracers and things like that, as you can see here, the temp max is 198. Uh, but there is another stat that you'll want to take into consideration here, and that is the IR ratio for your shields and their recharging. Um, and right here, as you can see, the one that has the most is almost double the IR of the bracer. The one that's less is right here, and I believe that's at 238, and that is the polar. Okay, so I would consider if you want to say stealth to upgrade to the polar, if not, go for the endo. It doesn't matter. On the test server, I was actually using Arctic Storms, um, and these actually helped quite a bit more than the regular bracers, and they're only just a little bit better. Okay, so keep that in mind. You can upgrade these uh, coolers, and they do have different stats. All right, so these go a long way. On hard point, it won't show up. Hard point, it says they're all the same, so you're not going to have any difference here. Okay, unfortunately. Uh, it's not going to change the efficiency. It's not going to change any stats. Hopefully they'll fix that. Um, the other thing to note here is, of course, the Coral Laser Cannons. Now, these are the most at 599 um, energy damage per shot. You get two shots per burst, maximum burst damage there of around 1100. 99. It's not that great. It's not that bad. It's okay. Um, compared to Omni Skies and everything like that, it's fine. Um, I've tried Omni Skies on these, and I've tried the M5As. I do prefer the M5As over all three. Uh, my ideal setup is this loadout right here. Guys, just so you know, on the test server, I ran this, this setup quite a bit, and uh, I had no problems running my ship. Now, I didn't have the cooler on here. Again, I had the Arctic uh, from the Wildfire, but um, the, the Polar would have probably done a lot better, too. It, but again, when I had just 
these three things on here, I could do everything. I could, you know, reach in my shields, I could shoot at the same time, I could pop EMP, and I never had any worries about power, okay? So this is the ideal setup for this ship, in my opinion. Uh, when you're talking about uh, sh HP and shield hit points, again, this ship has one of the top. If you switch to uh, from the shimmers, you're going to have 54 shield HP. If you have the shimmers on there, again, you're going to have 3,600. Uh, as for HP itself, second best in class next to the rate or the saber itself, which is as 10,060, I believe. This has 9,780. Not that much less. Uh, still really, really good. Again, light ships usually have around 6,000 or less, um, really 4,000 or less when you, when you take into consideration the most of them, all right? So that's really good. Uh, when it comes to speed, uh, again, you're just, you're almost exact stats of the regular Sabre at 275, uh, normal speed at 1235, afterburner, these are great. Uh, this is really one of the best in classes you can get. Again, the scythe is a little bit faster here at 285, but this right here is your strafe speed. And I have found that for some reason, I don't know if it's due to mass or size or whatever, that this ship is a little bit more agile and nimble than its cousin Sabre, Comet, and the regular Sabre, okay? Um, and those are basically the same ship. I'm just telling you the names for, um, I guess, note or whatever. But um, this ship does seem to have a little bit of uh, more maneuverability than the other Sabres, all right? So the same, the stats appear to be the same. They have the same amount of thrusters, uh, same engines, things like that. But these appear, or the uh, Sabre Raven appears to have a little bit better agility over uh, the other Sabre. So keep that in mind too. It's just the way I feel about it, the way I fly it. Uh, I feel like I can get away with things where the Sabre can't, especially in uh, big turn fights against Scythe and things like that. I feel like I'm almost equal to a Scythe in a turn fight, whereas a Sabre I know I'm just a little bit uh, at a disadvantage compared to a Scythe in a turn fight, all right, if it's a good pilot. Uh, whereas this ship, I feel like it's on even ground for some reason. And I can't explain it. I don't know why that is, but uh, I feel like this ship is very, very, very agile compared to the regular Saber. So keep that in mind. Um, and that covers the stats for this ship. And we're going to go over uh, some video and some footage of how to fly this ship effectively and what to do and how to do it. All right, here I found a vacant Wildfire Hornet. Now, a Wildfire Hornet has around 8,000 armor HP and 3,000 shield HP. So with our 3,600 damage of e EMP, uh, we're gonna eat right through those shields. Um, just so you guys know, uh, with only 600 extra damage leaking through, you're gonna be able to turn your ship back on almost right away. It's only gonna stun the ship and keep it offline for a couple of seconds. It seems to be based on how much damage actually bleeds through, okay? So on a ship like a Prospector that only has 1,600 shield, uh, HP uh, with 3,600 damage worth of EMP, you're going to have 16 ex extra 100, or 1,600 extra damage bleed through to the ship components, and that's going to turn the ship off for longer. All right, so keep this in mind when you're EMPing. Uh, some ships, if they're if it's a smart pilot, can just turn on the ship right again and start flying it. Okay. Um, as you can see here, it does going to it is going to take six shots to kill this armored target with EMP um, and shields down, which is quite a bit. Uh, so. Make sure you use these EMPs wisely, is the message here. Okay, in this video, we're gonna get into a fight with a freelancer. And uh, this is a special video because I wanted to showcase what happens when you're not aiming for specific components or a specific part of the ship. You can actually increase your time to kill exponentially here, um, which I am going to do to myself in no way, shape, or form should this ship take this long to kill but I'm gonna make it really difficult for myself by kind of outmaneuvering myself in the fight. And this is what I mean by that when I explain it on the forums a lot to people, um, that they're outmaneuvering themselves in dogfights. Uh, this is kind of an example of that, all right? You'll see me shooting at the, the reticle here, but I am hitting at different parts of the ships. I'm hitting different shield panels each time. So these shots are being absorbed by four different shield panels, and there's also one on top and bottom, if you guys didn't know this. Um, so these shots are being absorbed pretty pretty well by the shield and then now I'm finally getting through and I'm whittling it down a little bit to get through the shields before I pop the EMP and you're gonna see me do it there and that's gonna turn the ship off now unfortunately for um, you as an EMP pilot when this happens uh, pilots 
tend to go into this dead spin and their ship loses control and it keeps flying in these weird patterns, which if you're spinning around it can make it really difficult to hit as you can see there. Um, flying around in a circle while this is happening can increase your time to kill a lot. So make sure you're aiming correctly and uh, make your shots count, okay? All right, on the other side of things, this is gonna show you a fast time to kill. And this is gonna be an ambush attack, uh, kind of the way that people think they should play EMP ships, which uh, if you do it like this, this is fine. Now I'm gonna sneak up on this guy. I warped in and EMP is already charged. The display is bugged when you warp with EMP. You can do that, by the way, if you didn't know, uh, it does stay on. Um, so as you can see, I'm sneaking up behind this guy. He's shooting at ships in Port Olisar and I'm going to unleash the EMP right when I get up right behind him and I just want to whittle down that back panel, right? So now I'm going to whittle down the back shield, it's gone, and now I'm going to shoot the back armor of the ship and I'm going to keep focusing on that panel. He's going to fly away. I'm not going to shoot at the reticle. I'm going to shoot at the back of the ship so my shots continue to land on that panel and it's going to go down very, very quickly. And just to expand on this, I'm going to show you a clip of me killing a hammerhead solo in a saber raven. Now this guy was shooting uh, some kind of weapon uh, very fast out. I think it was just one pilot and he got into the turret. Um, this caused his shields to drop as you can see over and over again. His shields are trying to regen here but again I'm shooting at the back panel. I'm not going to let those shields regen on the back panel because I'm constantly just shooting at it, whittling it down, whittling it down, uh, causing a lot of damage up front. As long as you see the red happening to a ship like this, you're killing it. Um, and as you can see through his target, he's getting redder and redder, and he is about to pop here in a couple other shots. But as long as you can keep those shields down, uh, you can kill any ship, guys. It's just the shields that are the problem. All right, here we're going to showcase a fight with Glock JS. Uh, he's in a 325A. I am in my Saber Raven. Uh, this guy I do run into a lot uh, on the US servers. This is actually on the test server uh, right before the patch because I wanted to test some weapons and uh, some coolers and things like that. But um, we're going to have a nice fight here and this fight actually showcases some really cool things. Uh, and every now and then uh, you'll see me do something kind of neat and a, a, use a little trick uh, that I keep in, in my sleeves. Uh, and this is one of them coming up. Now Glock is a boom and zoomer in the 325A. I do fight him quite a bit and when he brings this ship out he likes to uh, zip past you, shoot, and then keep going and then turn around and do it again. Um, he's not going to get into a turn fight with me. He doesn't want to do that. He knows that uh, that's my forte and he's not going to let me do it. All right, But as he does pass, note how I'm dipping my left wing down and turning into him. This is so I can put myself between his guns and make myself harder to hit while he's shooting maybe in between that pepper and it's green. Um, his guns do have a chance to still just flat out miss me if I change, if I angle my ship right, okay? So keep that in mind. Angling your ship has a lot to do with hitting and missing. It's not just all about hitting that pepper. Now here he's going to land some good hits and hit me. Um, you're going to notice that my left and back shield go down. Now you're going to want to rewind because you're going to see my left shield pop right back up again. How did I do that? All right, I just hit left shield on my numpad, okay? That's it. Literally just hit that button for shield uh, that you want back up. If you have power in other areas uh, and other panels, it's gonna draw from that and pop that shield back up and now it's going to regen my back shield because I don't care about that as much. But in a turn fight, you're likely going to get hit in your left or right shield depending on which way you're turning or which way you're angling. In this case, the way I'm angling, my left shield is in jeopardy more than any of my ship. Um, even the front because of how his guns are curving into me and how I'm trying to shoot him. The same with him. His side panels are more in jeopardy of getting shot by me right here than anything. And you'll see as soon as he sees me charge this up, he's going to dip out and he's not going to let me have it. And now I'm in a very vulnerable position. If you ever miss with an EMP like I just did there, um, it's advantage to the other guy 100%. Now he's at full shields, I'm at no shields, and now I'm really having to push it. That's why you're gonna see me kind of black out a bit because I'm really pushing my ship to angle behind him. I'm not gonna let him get into the turn fight that he wants to get into me with me now because um, I don't want that because my shields are down. So I'm just timing it and he sees that he's not getting the hits that he wants so he's gonna break off again and now he's gonna close back in. 
Um, and you'll see the way I'm aiming, by the way. I'm not trying to lead or follow his target reticle. What I'm trying to do is ambush target, whereas I put my target reticle out in front of the pepper and then I let the pepper run into it and then I just shoot it in the middle. As you can see here, I'm just kind of letting the pepper run right through it and then I'll take a shot. Um, and that's the way you, you want to shoot with cannons on fixed weapons if you don't have gimbals like this ship is flying right now. Um, especially on targets of fast targets like this. It's going to make it a lot easier for you just to strafe into them, set the pipper up a little bit ahead, and uh, let the target just flow into it, right? Like right here. I don't get a good shot there, but again, that just goes to showcase how you aim with it, all right? Um, again, he is doing these boom and zoom tactics, and it's making it very difficult for me to uh, hit him. But again, I have something else on uh, my side here, and that is... Uh, the stealth, okay? Uh, I do fly in suppress IR, and you'll notice a lot of times when he's passing, he's not taking any shots, all right? Um, if you watch my Sabre video, you'll know that this is caused by suppress IR. The way it works is, um, you'll see right now I have a broken triangle and the pipper on his target. What he's seeing when he breaks away past 3,000 meters is just the solid triangle, and he's trying to slam down the target button to target me. He's not going to be able to get the broken triangle and the pipper until about 1,800 to 2,000 meters, okay? So he's having to pass very close to me, retarget me, and shoot at the same time, and that makes it very difficult to pull off his boom and zoom tactics. So that's why a lot of times when he's passing me, he's not shooting. All right. Um, now he's not suppressed IR, so as he pulls away from me like this, I have no trouble keeping my reticle on him at all times. All right, I have a firing solution 100% of the time in this fight. Uh, he's never going to break from me. But that just goes to show you the power of suppress IR and the power of a stealth ship, and how annoying it can be to fight one, especially if you use a good tactic against it. Because uh, this is how you want to fight an EMP ship, guys. Glock is doing a great job here. Props to Glock on this fight. It was a great fight. Um, he eventually does break engagement because uh, we do too much damage to each other, and, and that's just that. And so, um, but overall, it was a great fight and a great showcase of some of the things that you can do in a ship like this and some of the little tricks you can do in all ships, right? So uh, moving along, uh, we'll get into our next fight. All right, here I'm overlooking Port Alisar on the test server, just trying to test some things out. And I'm gonna get engaged by a freelancer very quickly. Um, this is how you'll want to fight when I was trying to do before with Glock, when I was talking about how I want to bait you into a turn fight, um, shoot you down, and then EMP. The Freelancer has way more shield HP than I can EMP down, so I am going to shoot it a couple of times. Just got to pepper it down a little bit. And I am pulling some Gs here just because I'm trying to uh, get under his guns. And there you'll see me dip my wing around the Gatlin guns as to not get hit. And you'll see I'm taking minimal hits as I'm doing this and angling my wing down. Uh, but again, I'm, now I'm starting to charge my EMP. Uh, we're locked into a turn fight. I see that he's engaged in it. He doesn't want to uh, stop it anytime soon. That's becoming apparent even while charging the EMP. It's at 100% and I'm going to go ahead and pop it as I get close. And now that's it. His shields are going to be off and um, he's going to try to shoot. His guns are sputtering right now. You can't really see it, but his... Thank you. 